Well, indeed, welcome to, to our church. Welcome to Church Online. Um, certainly not only peace, uh, but I, I know there are uh, plenty of people uh, joining us, zooming in from all over Australia. Uh, so we welcome you. Um, we know there are people from Wollongabba uh, joining us, uh, people from, uh, from all over the place. And we welcome you and we... Uh, isn't this great that we can get together as God's people, uh, not not necessarily connected by, by even time and space because you can uh, join uh, later. Um, this, is, this is fascinating that we can be the people of God joined together even though we are isolated. Um, I hope you had a great Anzac Day yesterday and uh, celebrated Anzac Day and remembered uh, the, uh, the fallen uh, in, a, in a respectful but socially isolated way. Um, I'm not sure that everybody uh, that went to the end of their driveway yesterday morning uh, stayed isolated. I, I suspect that there may have been a few little gatherings and chattings, um, but uh, um, no harm done. Uh, we pray and we hope. Uh, so God bless you as you join us today. Uh, and as we come together as God's people, those separated join together in spirit. And that's a, that's a good joining. So welcome. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. have been born anew. Hallelujah. Through the living and enduring word of God. Hallelujah. Let's confess our sins in the presence of God and of each other. We confess to you, almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Grant this Lord to us all. Amen. And we read together, uh, well, responsively, Psalm 100 and something. Anyway, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. 
What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Let's pray for the assurance of Christ's presence. Almighty and merciful God, you made the disciples glad by the sight of the risen Lord. Remind us that he is always with us and that we now share in his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we invite our guest reader, Angeli, to, uh, to read our readings this morning. The reading for today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 and 36 to 41. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As God's people through our baptism into Christ, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's time to, uh, to get the teddies now. Um, so kids, if, uh, if you'd like the... Uh, uh, your teddies to join in on the teddy talk. You better better grab them. But uh, if not, um, just yeah, join in with the uh, the teddy talk and see what the teddies have uh, got in their adventure today. One day in Teddy Land, there was a teddy sitting all alone, wondering what purposeful thing he could do with his life. He was a good teddy. He wanted to do the right thing. He didn't know what he was going to do. Suddenly, an angel teddy came to visit him and said to him, there's something you can do. You need to help everybody. Everybody, the teddy said. How can I help everybody? What do I need to do? Well, said the angel teddy, well, that's not a lot, but you just need to help save the world. Save the world? That's a big job. Well, most of the work's been done. It's just that you need to take the message out there. So it'll be OK. Off you go. And off the angel teddy went. The little teddy was puzzled as to what this could mean. 
he didn't know what he could do as far as helping anyone. He wasn't a particularly clever teddy. He didn't know what he was going to do or what he could do. One of his friends came along and so he told him all about this strange incident that had happened to him. Save the world? How can you do that? Well, I was thinking maybe you could help me. How can I help you? I don't know anything. And with that, the other teddy moved along. One came little Ted. He wanted to know what was going on. So he asked what was happening in the, in the Teddy's life. And he told him, I'm going to save the world. I don't know how, but apparently it's all done, but we just have to go and tell everybody. Tell everybody? It's a big job, said little Ted. How can I help? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure you could. I'm sure we need a little Teddy. I don't know how I could help. I'm too small. And he wandered off. Just then, a big teddy came along and said, hey, tell me you've got a job to do. And Teddy said, yes, it is a big job. Maybe a big teddy could help me. And what's the job? Well, somehow we need to save the world. Save the world? That's too big a job, even for a big teddy. The little, the smaller teddy said, well, most of the work's been done, but I don't know how we're going to do it, but we just have to tell everybody. Hmm, that sounds like it's too big a job. And the teddies began to talk about it between themselves, and they gathered together. They didn't know how they were going to do it, or whether they even could. Then along came a special teddy. They could see him coming. They realised that he was special because he was confident and strong and he was extra shiny and extremely fluffy. I hear you have a job to do, they said. The special teddy said, well, how did you hear that? Yes, well, it's me that wants you to do the job. You see, we've done all the work. We just need you to go and tell everybody that everything's going to be okay. Hmm. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, it's not so much how, said the special teddy. The way you do it is that I'll be with you and I'll help you with it. And every time you go out and, and tell somebody the good news, I'm going to be with you and help you and, and give you the ability to be able to do that. So you're going to walk along with us. Yes, you won't always see me, but so that you can do it. I'm telling this little angel with you. Little angel Teddy's going to be around and he's going to help you. He's going to let you know everything that I'm doing and he's going to let me know everything that you're doing. And that sounds like a plan. And Teddy began to get excited about the wonderful things they could do because the special Teddy had given them a special helper to help them. Okay, kids. So this was a little teddy play, but really it's about people becoming Christians and following Jesus. Pastor Rob wanted me to tell you that the, the behind this story is a great message, and that message is that Jesus has given us life. When he rose from the dead, he died on the cross and he rose from the dead for us, and we've got the good news that Jesus has risen from the dead and we can tell everybody 
And that message is going to save the world. And when we share that message, the Holy Spirit will be with us. That's what that uh, little angel teddy was all about. But anyway, God promises that the Holy Spirit will be with us. And Jesus said that when we go out and tell others, the Holy Spirit will be with us and will give us the power and the ability to be able to share the good news with others. So what a great story and what a great message that we can share this good news with others. And the little bit that we do, every time we share Jesus' love, we help to save the world. What a great message. Oh, we thank you. Thank that little Teddy for, for explaining it so well. Uh, I just want to pray. Uh, kids, can we just fold our hands and, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful message, this good news of salvation that we can take to the world. We ask that you guide us every step of the way as we become part of the answer that you've given us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what a thing to, to compete with. Um, I've got to compete with the Teddy now and, uh, and bring the message. Um, the, what I want to focus on this morning is that reading that Angeli read before uh, where Peter um, has his first sermon. Now, this is quite an amazing sermon because he had never preached in public before. He was just a fisherman. Uh, he went out, preached his first sermon and 3,000 people uh, were added to their number. That's what I want to focus on. That number, 3,000. Just let that sink in for a moment. 3,000 people. 3,000 people coming to Christ in one day. 3,000 people moving from not believing in Jesus to believing in Jesus. 3,000, not 300, not 30, but 3,000 people. Wouldn't that be fantastic if we could see that today? Wouldn't it be fantastic to see 3,000 people coming into your church? Oh, I don't know if we could do that. No, not even in, I don't think even in the Gatton Church we'd, uh, we'd fit 3,000 people. I know we can get nearly 500 in here at a squish. That's like that's too many, that's unmanageable. Well, that's what they did there. They didn't even have a church. 3,000 people. Have we, have we lost our sense of wonder? Have we lost our sense of vision? When we can't even visualise that happening in our church today. When we can't even uh, get our head around the fact that this kind of thing could happen. Because it can happen. It's, it's the way the church is designed. The church is designed to grow. Uh, Jesus gave us everything we needed to, to take this message out into the world. He told us, you know, take this message to the world and I will be with you always. We, and we, we hear that message and we think, oh, that's, that's a huge job. That's, that's too big for me. I'm not sure that I can do that. Um, but it is the, the task that we've been given to do. It is the, uh, the calling of the church. It's the purpose of the church. Now, we, we have to fulfil our purpose. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, a fish is no good in a tree. You know, fish need to swim in the water. That's what fish do. They do it so well. Uh, and we think, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't spend three days under the water. No, we'd drown because we're not designed to do that. Whereas fish, when they're swimming in the water, they do it so well because that's what they're designed to do. The church is designed to take the message throughout the world to every individual on this earth. And when it's doing it, when the church focuses on, on its purpose, it does it very well. There's the key. When we don't focus on our purpose, when we are, we're like a fish climbing a tree, when we don't focus on our purpose, we become right, as useless as a fish in a tree. 
Is that a simile? Well, it is now. 3,000 people. I keep coming back to that. When I read that passage, it hits me in the face every time that 3,000 people said, well, I suppose they had an advantage, didn't they? They, they did have a bit of an advantage that, um, that they had a lead up to, to Peter's call to faith like no other. They had just seen Jesus die, be crucified. They'd just seen the trial. They'd participated in it. They'd been there when, when the resurrection happened and they heard the rumours that Jesus had come back to life. And now this is the, the first public presentation of that information. And so, yes, there was, a, there was a good lead up to it. But then we've had a pretty good lead up too. We know more about, you know, we've got churches, we've got buildings. We know more about the history of Jesus. We know more about the relevance of everything that Jesus did than Peter had pieced together at that time. We know more about praying for people. We've, we've had 2,000 years of experience of building churches and reaching out to people and we've seen some good things and some bad things. So we've seen uh, how it works well and we've seen how not to do it. So we've got our own advantages. Don't think that they had it all their way. They had persecution as well, which we don't have. We, um, 3,000 people. How could that happen? Well, we, we do see glimpses of it today. Uh, we, we still see large numbers of people coming to faith in various places. We've seen it in Australia. In 1959, the Billy Graham Crusades came to Australia, and again in 69, I think, but uh, 1959 was the one I, I was focusing on particularly, and there over 10,000 people made decisions for Christ. Now, maybe even if you take out um, those who were a little bit lapsed in their faith and were coming back or those who were uh, followers of Christ and took that as an opportunity to, to make a deeper commitment, to walk more closely with Jesus. That happens too when you, when you have these altar calls. Uh, people uh, take the opportunity to, to take a step forward in their faith and that's a good thing too. But even if, so even if you halve it, you've still got over 5,000 people. Um, making decisions for Christ, wanting to come to faith. And during that time, there was uh, 291,000 or thereabouts people attended those, those rallies, those Billy Graham crusade rallies. Fantastic thing that happened in this country. It can still happen today. But maybe... Maybe part of the problem is that we have lost our, our sense of vision, our sense of excitement about it. Maybe we've lost our realisation that it can happen. Maybe we've lost our vision. If you, you know, maybe the vision of the church is far too small. Maybe what we're doing is we're, we're saying, and you hear this a lot, what we need to do is to start the Sunday school again. We, we need a youth group. We need to balance the budget. If that's your vision as a church, your vision is far too small. What do I want to achieve this morning in this message? Right? So I'll just tell you, just, I'll blow my cover, right? This is what I'm trying to do. What I want to achieve is to shift your vision to God's vision for your church. I want to help uh, uh, reignite this spark of excitement that as we look forward for our church or for your church, wherever you are, or, you, or your own personal ministry that God has called you to, as we move forward in our faith, I want to shift your vision. I want to lift it from a small vision to the vision that Christ has. I want, I want you to shift from uh, fixing a few little things which could easily be done humanly to the impossible, the seemingly impossible, because Jesus says, I want you to do the impossible and when you attempt the impossible, I'm going to give you the power to do it. That's when I want, I want to shift your vision. I want to shift your vision from, you know, your neighbour and maybe two other people to 3,000. I want to shift your vision from uh, wanting to see a few more young people in church 
to 3,000. I want to shift your vision from balancing the church's budget to 3,000 new people. Let's, let's lift our vision to how God sees our church and God sees our future, not what we, not what we have. So that's what I want to achieve this morning. Hopefully we're part way to doing that. Lifting our vision. How can we lift our vision? You see, we can look back and we, we can say, yes, we've, uh, we're, we've seen uh, this sort of thing happen before in our, in our church, in our country, even right here. Um, but, uh, but as we do, and, and we need to look in Scripture to say, well, what does Christ want our church to be and, and how does he see our church? And so we, we need to imagine that which Christ, Im, Christ imagines for us. It was Albert Einstein who said, uh, if you can't imagine it, you can't do it. That's a bit of a concern for the church because if we've lost our imagination for uh, massive outreach into the community, if we've, if we've lost our imagination for the miraculous, we're not going to see it. You know, if we sit back and say, I'd love to see 3,000 people come to faith, I'd love to see the young people come back. If we, if we can't imagine it, if we can't even... Uh, visualise it in our mind and do those things that lead to order, we're never going to be able to achieve it. We're never going to be able to see it happen because we can't imagine it. We don't, we, we don't even need to, to invent something new because here we have an example in this Bible reading this morning of it happening. 3,000 people. This is, uh, it's, it's mapped out for us. It's, we're shown how it can happen. And so, so it, it ignites us, it ignites our imagination and, and we say, well, this could happen. What would happen? Imagine what would happen. Let's play a little imagining thing here. We've got this coronavirus thing. I don't know if you've heard about that, but you know, this thing is happening in our community at the moment and the, the, the race is on for... Uh, uh, some kind of treatment, some kind of uh, cure. Right, so they're looking at, at various uh, medications and, and people are working on a vaccine and, and God bless them in that and, and uh, oh God, may they find something soon. But uh, we've got this, this work towards a vaccine. Imagine if tomorrow somebody said, I found it. A drug that will help and we'll cure this thing. What do you think would happen? Every television in the world would feature it. Every news report. There would be even, um, even all the important war movies that we're seeing at the moment would, would stop and there would be a, uh, a news break, a news flash in the middle. We've done it. We've found it. And can you imagine the rush on the pharmacies and the doctors? Can you imagine the turmoil in our community as people came out of their houses and made a rush on this offering of help? See, the, the activity would match the importance of what happened. Speaking of Anzac Day, I was watching this movie well, it was a documentary on the Kokoda Trail. I don't know if you saw that. It was really good, um, a documentary on the Kokoda Trail. And, and I've known about the Kokoda Trail for a long time, but I wasn't, wasn't really aware of the amazing significance of the Kokoda campaign. And they said during that campaign, uh, interviewing some of the old guys who were, who were there, and as they reflected on that campaign, they said, Kokoda saved Australia. The Kokoda campaign saved Australia. And we haven't been thoroughly aware of the significance of that campaign. Now, as a result, don't you think it would be important for everybody to hear about that? Because that's what saved us. I think so. So, with these two examples... 
we look at the resurrection of Jesus. We look at what happened in the life, death and resurrection of this man. And when we hear about the significance of that, that the significance of Jesus, the, the Jesus thing, the significance of Jesus is such that everybody should be bursting forth from their houses to seek out a place where they can hear more. Everybody should, well, they can't do that now, can they, because we've got this COVID thing, but everybody should be logging in and wanting to hear more because of its significance. Its significance is more than just helping us here on this earth. It's more than just the, the wonders of the Christian faith which can give you peace and comfort no matter what hardship you find. The wonders of the Christian faith, the wonders of the Jesus thing is that it takes us from a destination to hell, eternal damnation, to a, the destination, heaven, where we live with God in, in eternal bliss. And we get to meet all our mates. Wouldn't that be fantastic? If there was something that could overcome death, wouldn't you want to hear about it? Wouldn't we want to tell people about it? That's the, the... We need to get... If this is not happening, if I should finish a sentence soon, if this is not happening, if... If there is not a, a bursting forth of excitement and exuberance about this Jesus thing, then we're just not understanding it. It's like the Kokoda campaign. We just haven't heard enough about it to realise its significance. If, if there is not an overwhelming national and global excitement about Jesus, then we just haven't heard it properly. This is, this is the return we need to make. We need to return to right, exactly what did happen at the resurrection, exactly what happened in the Jesus story. We need to hear about that because we need to get its significance because its significance it's, is such that you are saved. You are, are, are rescued from a destination being held. You are rescued from damnation. You are rescued from hopelessness. You are rescued from even sickness and despair. You are given hope and that hope takes you so far as to reach eternity. That hope takes you from the struggles of this life into the bliss of the next. This, is, this goes beyond global and cosmic significance. This is the most important thing that's happened ever. More important than the Big Bang, if that happened. I don't know. I wasn't there. Nobody was there. It's more important than, than anything that's ever happened in the history of this world or will ever happen. And so when we start to grasp the significance of the Jesus thing, what can we do but rejoice but get excited, but become hopeful for our future, but become excited about sharing this good news with others. That's what this number 3,000 twigs in my head, that there is something ex so exciting here that we just can't keep it to ourselves. But how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to have to talk with you about that next week because, you know... I got a little bit carried away with the what. Um, this is just so exciting that we need to do something about it. And, and so we need to start talking seriously about the how. We need to start imagining how we can influence 3,000, how we can speak in terms of thousands rather than ones and twos, how we can think in terms of reaching the community for Christ instead of wondering how we're going to meet, meet the church budget. How we lift our vision higher and how we do it, we're going to have to talk about that next week. But just for this week, I want you to lift your vision a little bit. I want you to, to say, this 
is important. This is fantastic. How can I move from just the one to the 3,000? And why? Just focusing on that resurrection of Jesus, that this guy came back from the dead. This guy uh, took our sin upon him and took it to the cross. And through that terrible, torturous event, made me clean. And because of that, I'm acceptable to God. This is something worth getting excited about. This is something worth sharing. So as we come to experience that newness, that freshness, as we come to revisit the great good news of the Jesus thing, let's, uh, let's lift our vision a little bit. Let's start imagining. Let's look forward with hope. Let's look forward with, with excitement because there's a lot there to be had. May the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. I want to pray for you just now as we go, uh, as we just come to the end of this section and before we have a song. Um, Heavenly Father, um, we just want to glorify your name, that you have brought us such great good news, that you've rescued us from sin, death and the power of the devil. And through this resurrection of Jesus, you have given us new hope. I want to pray for every person who's tuning in today, uh, that they might experience the grace of God in a special way, that they might experience your goodness, that they might know your love, and that in experiencing your love, in recognising the wonder of the resurrection, they would have life. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
traditionally, um, we would be accustomed to passing the plate around at that time, wouldn't we? Because that's the, that's the song after the sermon and so then you, you, uh, you have the, the offering. I'm just bringing this up now because it's an important part of our worship that we, we haven't really found an easy way over um, during this time of isolation. So some are, are quite au fait with uh, online giving and, and uh, uh, internet banking. And for you, it's no problem. That's, uh, that's easy. Some, some um, find it difficult to, to be able to, to give online and to, to find a way to do that. Um, so, but just for all of us, this time of, of isolation, we need to remember that Giving is important. Not, I'm not talking about balancing the church budget here. That that was that would be important, and our treasurer would would feel would sleep better at night if if that was happening. But uh, that's not the point. The point is that giving is a part of our worship. It's a part of our we, we give to God. We we put aside some of our income uh, as a a sign of of honour and respect and glory to God for our work and, and our livelihoods. Um, so I just encourage you to, to find ways you can do that. Um, you can, you know, there'll be things in the announcements of how, how to do that, but uh, I just raise it here. Let's, uh, let's, let's spend a moment of giving in our hearts. And so that as we move to our, our, our next prayer, uh, that gives it some context. Our prayer, the offering prayer, uh, let's, Let's make our offering a part of our heart and a part of our attitude. Let's pray. Thank you, Eternal Father, for setting us free through the sacrifice of your Son. Help us through your great love for us to love and serve one another and all people. Amen. And we pray the prayer of the church, the responses are there. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you respond with, hear our prayer. Um, so let's pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your goodness and especially for the gift of your dear Son, through whom you have revealed your will and grace. Plant your word in us and help us to keep it in our hearts so that we bear much fruit in well-doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep the teaching of the gospel pure in your church throughout the world and give us faithful pastors to preach your word with boldness and power. Help all who hear the word to understand and believe. Send out labourers into your harvest and bring to faith those who do not yet know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and peace, for the sick and the dying who hunger for help and for those who hunger for understanding, that your word may be revealed to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessing rest on agriculture, commerce and industry. Bless our arts and culture, our rest and labour. Protect those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Support all who strive to do your will in their daily vocation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for those we celebrated yesterday on Anzac Day, those who have given their life in service to their, to their country, uh, those who have, have worked extremely hard to maintain our freedom and, and comfort in this great land, Australia. And we pray that you would bless all who, who serve, um, not only in the, uh, in the armed forces, but also on the front line fighting this COVID virus. Uh, we pray for all essential service workers and all those particularly in the medical field. Bless those who are seeking a, uh, a vaccine and those who are seeking drugs to, uh, to assist in the treatment of this virus. We ask your hand of blessing upon them that they might find an answer quickly. And Lord, we thank you that you bless your church and that, that over your church you rest your loving arms that you've appointed angels to guard us and because of them the, the uh, strongholds of the devil are falling 
and that you are providing ways of bringing the good news. Lord, help us to step into the victory that you have won. We pray these things now through our Lord Jesus Christ, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And finally, let us pray for all of those things that our Lord would have us ask. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, who has won the victory over death and has given us life, be with you now and always. And may your life express the great gratitude and wonder of the resurrection. And may you begin, as you begin to live that resurrection here today, may new life sprout forth from you and give you peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit go with you now and always. Amen. Just some quick announcements on behalf of Peace Church. Um, many of you would know that today was supposed to be our annual general meeting. Well, no surprises, that won't be happening. Um, but as an update, Church Council is getting advice from the district and looking at how we can have a meeting uh, in a way that would meet the requirements of, uh, of our constitution, but also of the ACNC and the Queensland government. So we're looking into those. We'd hope that at the very least, we may be able to reschedule for some time before the end of May in order to still meet our constitutional requirements. But of course, we will have safety first in any decision. As Pastor Rob said, yes, um, giving, we, we encourage you for members of our congregation to go to our website. There is a, um, some details on the website. Um, um, you can see that that's the address there. And if you look for, the, for that symbol there, that'll take you to ways in which you can um, support the church financially during this period. Uh, we've had requests from people um, to get copies of the handouts that um, Phil sends out every week that includes some of the prayers of the church, the liturgical um, um, elements of the, of the services and so on. If you would like to get that and you're not currently getting that, can you just contact the church and we will add you to our email list. And then most importantly, if you do get those handouts and you know somebody who cannot log in, please print them out and drop it in their, in their letterbox. Help them out during this period. Finally, one last thing, morning tea will follow. If you look on our website, there's a link to morning tea. If you are a visitor who is here and joining us and you haven't been to morning tea, I encourage you to come and to join us so that we can introduce ourselves and get to know you. Um, there are some names there that I, I don't recognize. Um, and I would love to put a face to the name. And I'm sure all of the members of Peace would love to do that. So, look, that's enough from me. I'll hand back to you, Pastor Rob. I may just need to add a silliness warning for the uh, morning tea. Um, may your day and your week be one where you rediscover the excitement of faith, the wonder of the resurrection, and grasp again a vision of what who you could be in Christ and what the church could be in Christ and under Christ. Let's get a new vision. May God bless you. Amen. See you at morning tea. Mm -hmm.